Welcome to Hollywood Changemakers, a podcast by entertainment industry professionals who want to talk about the issues that impact our culture from a new perspective. Faith, this is Hollywood Changemakers. Hi, I'm Karen Covell of the Hollywood Prayer Network. I want to welcome all of you today to the Hollywood Changemakers podcast. We have a very exciting guest today, a longtime friend, a dear woman of God in the industry, an incredible actress, and a woman with stories that glorify our Lord. I am welcoming you to meet Diane Cannon. Thank you so much for being here today, Diane. Oh, Karen, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it's so great. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Well, it's so much fun to get together and to just give God the glory for what's going on in our industry. Most people don't even think Christians are here, let alone that God is actually active and moving here. So I love to talk to people who are so committed to him. And my first question is, how and when did you become a Christian? Well... <sighs> Yesterday, and the day before that, and the day before that, it's always new. It's always new. And I find that I can't just say 10 years ago or 20 years ago because so many things happen that renew my faith. But I was born of a Jewish mother and a father who said, God who? He didn't know God at all. But he came from a family of 10 boys and two sisters. They lived on a farm. And... My mother was um, radical about her, her, her Judaism. She was born in the Ukraine, which at that point was a part of Russia, escaped the Cossacks at that time. They've always had problems in the Ukraine, those precious mm-hmm. people, and made it very clear to my, my dad that her Judaism was very important to her. But then my daddy's brothers and sisters found Jesus who my mother said, I didn't know he was lost. I mean, she couldn't believe that because her Judaism was so important to her. And he became radical about his faith in Jesus. So he had promised my mother that we would be raised in the synagogue, that we would be raised as as Jews. So on the way to the synagogue, we would sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. I'd go in and sing that song for the rabbi who didn't seem to enjoy it as much as my dad did. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story that happened. May I? Yes. That helped me so, so much in my life. Because Christianity is very important to me, but so is Judaism. My mother and father, because of the split in who is God and who is God not, became the house became a war zone. And when my brother who my mother wanted more than anything for my brother to be uh, uh, to have his bar mitzvah. Uh, bar mitzvah in the Jewish religion means that at 13 years of age, a young boy becomes a man. He takes his vows in the synagogue, for those who don't know. And it's a turning point in, in, in a life, in a, and especially was very important to my mother. So the synagogue was, everything was done. The food was ordered. The Hadassah was coming. The rabbi knew. Everybody, it was all done. David was prepared with his reading of the Torah. And he came to my mother and he said, I'm taking my stand for Jesus. And she said, you're taking your stand for nothing. You're taking your stand for being a nice Jewish boy. And she went, she really, because of her profound uh, family life, because of her faith, because of her family, she fell apart. So she called Rabbi Levine, who at that time was head of the synagogue where I was attending, Happily. Was this in Washington? This is in Seattle, Washington. And I was singing uh, at the services on Friday nights. I was singing the, the Jewish songs and the hymns, and they don't call them hymns, but the Jewish songs, me, como, co, and so on. So we went to see Rabbi Levine, and my mom said, um, I, I, can't, I can't live with this. I want my boy to be Jewish. And if he's not, I think I'm going to die. And so my parents' marriage was on very shaky ground. It was just my mother, David, my brother, and me. And Rabbi Levine looked at my mother. I'll never forget this, Karen. He looked at my mother and he said, Clara. My mother's name was Clara Portnoy. Is David going to be a man of honor? She said, I hope so. Is he going to be a man of honesty, of commitment, of loyalty, of compassion, of truth? 
of health, of love? And she said, I hope so. And he then said, then what does it matter what we call him? Wow. How did she respond? Just like you. Just like you. But it turned my thinking at that very young age completely around because it saved the marriage. David then went to church with Daddy, and I went to the synagogue with Mom so she wouldn't be alone. And later on, I was led to... uh, Christ in a different way. But that's how it all started. And the war zone became, because I went with mom, it became a house a little divided. But through it all, in my search for truth, capital T, Mm -hmm. I found that there's one God who loves everybody. We separate ourselves, and we call ourselves by different names and different groups and different functions. But I'll tell you something, Karen. I don't. I don't. I don't live by labels anymore. Christian, Jew, Buddhist, atheist, boohoo, baha, bihi. I don't care what you call it. It's limiting, because I know some Christians that I don't want to be in the room with, and I know some Jewish people I don't want to be in the room. It's not about that. Show me how you live your life. Show me the fruit of what you do. Show me if you're honest, if you're truthful, if you're legitimate. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I so do. Jim and I, when we talk to people who don't believe in Jesus, and they say, well, what do you believe? Are you one of those born-againers or something? And Jim says, I worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm a follower of Jesus, and I have a spirit guide. And that's the Holy Spirit. And it embraces everybody. It doesn't cause division. <sighs> and yet he's committed to his faith. And I think we have, to, we have to know how to express ourselves in ways that aren't culturally divisive. Yes. And Without that don't, compromising. Yes. Yes. Totally. And, and I keep, you know, I, I, I keep growing, hopefully, every single day. I didn't want to get up as early as I got up today. But I heard some things that I had to explore and was led to understand and pray for understanding all the time and enlightenment and truth and love and how to love the way God loves. And my understanding of that is that God just looks down and loves everyone. What was his name? Saddam Hussein buried in that big hole with all that money because he thought that was his God. And how we make gods out of everything but God. And we may break God's heart, but he loves us unconditionally. Yes. Yeah. That's the, that was one of the toughest things for me to understand, that God didn't love me if, mm-hmm. that God didn't love me because. God just loved me in spite of who I was and what I did. And, and so people say, well, if that's the case, then why change? Well, because that love changes you. You don't even have to try. That love softens and remolds and revisits and renews and revives and recharges and reshapes. And you just watch it. You think, gosh, is that me? It's becoming, yeah, to take on the same nature as Jesus, which is love. So true. Right? Oh, my goodness, yes. That's so beautiful. It's so true. So did you take that faith into the entertainment industry with you, or did you— discover it after you got into Hollywood? Oh, my goodness. That's a good question. Um, I had a very curious time in Hollywood. I was told that everyone would come on with me and make advances, and hardly anybody did, so I thought there was something wrong with me. (laughs) I didn't have producers and directors and all that, because when I walked in, I had one thing on my mind— I wasn't looking for favor or um, for—but I wanted the job. And a couple times it did happen, but I would say for the most part it didn't. I've always been a seeker. I didn't know that it was God I was seeking, but I wanted to understand why God, so-called God, caused so much trouble in our home. That's a good question. I wanted to understand that. I wanted to understand why 
God because we were all worshiping God. And because of what Rabbi Levine had said, is, is it going to be kind? Is it going to compassion? All the qualities of God. Then, then why the fight? Yeah, why didn't it work smoothly? Why wasn't it smoother? So I set out to understand that. And along the way, I visited different churches. I was, I wasn't, I didn't, I went to the synagogue on a, on a holiday, uh, Yom Kippur, I think it was. And um, I think I was more impressed with the way people were dressed than the sermon. Mm. And I just thought, you know, I need, I need something with the spirit involved. And I don't know if I said it in those words. I think in the words of, of a younger girl, I would say, I just wanted to feel something that was real. I went to different churches. I had pastors come on with me. Sometimes that was very disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple scenes I won't even tell you about that were, that were you know, and I thought, well, there's that label thing again. Because what I heard Rabbi Levine say was, don't, don't put labels on things. In my spirit, that's what I heard. Right. But you forget that as you go along, you know? Um, hey, I met the greatest Christian boy. I want you to meet him. Okay, great. And then you meet him and it turns out not to be quite like that. And so there was that label thing again. But I was all, always very honest about my seeking. Um, so once when I was walking on the UCLA campus, somebody said, what house do you belong to? And I pointed to a church and said that house. Those kind of things were just happening in spite of me. Interesting. But I definitely... Uh, I have not always, I have not always been wise. I don't always, you know. Um, so you're human? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I sometimes, instead of tacking, I sail straight into the wind. And when you're in a sailboat, you get knocked over if you do that. Yeah. So a lot of times they'd say, what are you doing here? And I'd say, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm seeking Christ. Well, you're not going to find Christ here. I said, well, then I better find Christ and bring him here. I love it. So people knew for the most part that I worked. As a matter of fact, I remember, remember after September 11th, I was working in a very successful TV series that I was part of. And I came on set that day and asked if we could pray. And they said, no. Yeah. Yeah. This was the day after September 11th, because we were supposed to film that day, but we had the day off. And they called us at the end of the day and said, we will be filming tomorrow. So when they said no, I thought, <sighs> and that there was a, a large amount of uh, wonderful Jewish people that were part of the group. But I thought, there's a real resistance here. There's a real, um, I don't want to say enemy. I don't want to say armor. I want to say resistance. Yeah, like a closed heart. Yeah. Hurt hearts, hearts that have been broken, broken, hearts that have lied and been lied to. And the only one that can crack through that is the Father. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, um, I think it was, oh, I think it was when I went through my divorce with Carrie that I radically turned because in order to save the marriage, he thought that I should do LSD and I knew I shouldn't. But I so wanted to save the marriage and he had had such a unfair childhood. He was abandoned and was told that his mother was dead and he found out at 30 that she wasn't, that she had been, can I have a Kleenex yes. please? Yes. Yeah. When you, oh good, thank you. Thank you baby. Um, oh, things come on you, you know? It's, it's when, things the, when, come the, when on the spirit's you. moving, it really is. At 30 years, his father told him that his mother died because his father didn't want to pay alimony. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, and he stuck her in a nut house. And um, in a, in a um, state-run hospital. Told her she was going there for tests and, and then this is had when her locked up. Carrie Grant was a child? When he was a child, when he was eight or nine years old, he came home from school one day and his mother said, and his father said, Your mother is gone to the, the seashore. He said, Well, why wouldn't she take me to the seashore? Well, she couldn't. She just needed a rest. 
his father was a philanderer and uh, didn't spend a lot of time at home. And Carrie just loved his mother so much. So a few, maybe a few months, maybe eight or nine months later, he told Carrie that his mother died and uh, that he was going to go live with his grandmother because he was now going to go live, the father was going to go live with this woman that he had a baby with. So it wasn't until Carrie was 30 that his father called him and said, I have to tell you something. Your mother is not dead. Yeah. Wow. So. How do you process that? Many, 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 you, you don't. Okay, so you, amazing story. At 30 years old, Cary Grant found out that his mother, who he thought was dead, was actually alive. And what happened? He went to her. She didn't recognize him, of course, 30 years later. And, you know, she felt abandoned. And it's a whole long story. As a matter of fact, ah, Karen, I wrote a book called Dear Dear Cary. And right now... They just cast me in it. ITV and BBC are making a movie, a four-hour miniseries out of it. Oh, my goodness. And they just cast me yesterday. I'm executive producing it. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, then they cast Carrie, and so a lot of this will be seen and understood. Uh, we've been working on the script. They came to me 10 years ago. That's how long That's we've been long. working on this, yeah. And the end of August, they start filming. Mm. So... So did that experience bring him closer to God or farther away from God? The LSD that he took was, he was taking in hopes to find God. And I said, I don't think you need pills to find God. I think you could find God without pills, without drugs. But I wanted, he wanted me to give up my career. I gave it up. He wanted me to take LSD. I knew in my spirit I shouldn't do it. But I wanted nothing more than for him to be happy. I really wanted that more than anything because of what he'd been through. And I was the only woman in his experience in his 57 years that ever gave him a child because he, he didn't even trust women to that extent. So he trusted me. And what happened was when you give up your soul, what, what, what do you mean by soul, Diane? When you give up the deepest seed of feeling in you, the deepest seed of commitment in you, to please someone else, it's over. Right. It's over. You can't make anyone else happy. you got to bring happiness to it and hopefully encourage what, what breeds happiness in them, which is the Spirit of God. Well, what do you mean by that, Diane? Well, I mean, without God, it's impossible to have lasting happiness because the happiness you get from the world acts like a Band-Aid. And when you start to sweat, it doesn't stick anymore. It's only circumstantial. Yeah. It's based on circumstance, which is fleeting. So I did that. I did LSD, and it really messed me up. I heard it was horrible, yeah. I wound up in a nut house. And when I got out of the nut house, what is a nut house? Well, nut house is where they put you and they think you're crazy. And I was. I couldn't make sense out of anything. Like I can't with what's going on in the world now. You can't make sense out of it. So when you try, it's like one of my little pups chasing its tail. It's never going to catch it. It's just, you're going to get hold of that string and you're never going to let go. So I said, I've got to spend some study time here. Because I found in the nut house, Karen, it was so strange. I found that people were discussing the same things in the nut house that people outside the nut house, someone's sister, slept with her husband, someone else cheated on her. So the, the same things that we discuss in the nuthouse, they were discussing us. So I thought, well, the whole world is a nuthouse. It is. <laughs> it's, it's Looney Tunes. What the hell is it? Looney Tunes. It's all yes. flat. Nothing's on key. There's no harmony. It's discord. It's, it's discord. up and down. So I thought, oh, I got to get to work. So I found this amazing woman that taught Bible. Friends of mine had studied with her, and I said, look, I don't want to call God God, because as far as I'm concerned, God's a troublemaker. He did nothing but cause trouble in my house. I've just left a marriage where they talked about God, but if that was the God of love, then I don't want to know him. Can I said, just for the sake of our study, can I call God love? She said, that's the best name you could give God, because that's what God is. 
She said, but it's not the love that comes and goes. It's capital L. And it's a love that sticks like crazy glue. I said, I knew I'd found my teacher. And I studied with her for 43 years. And in the beginning, five days a week. Wow. Seven hours a day. You were hungry. Oh, honey, I was famished. I was starving. Yes. Sweetheart, I had just been married to Carrie Blunk and Grant. <laughs> oh, <it laughs> Come on. impossible, yes. Right. And that didn't make and me that happy. That didn't make you happy. So how could anything or anyone else, because we're all taught that happiness is outside of us. That's going to make you happy. So we make a God out of food. We make a God out of cars. We make a God out of men. We make a God out of women, out of dogs, out of mothers, out of fathers, name it. And everybody gets the glory but God. So the awakening is still day by day by day. I awaken to new revelation. What is a revelation? Insight, understanding. Standing. I can't have faith because you tell me to. I can't have faith in that green plant because you tell me it's green and I should believe in it. I want to understand it. I want to understand what is it? What makes it love? What makes me the image and likeness of God? Right. What makes me shine? And I'll tell you something that has helped me and that might help some of our friends that are sharing this with us today. Just for a moment. Think of the sun as God. Just, just for this moment. The sun is God and all the different rays from the sun are you and me. And the light we get, uh-huh. the energy get, we get, the truth we get, the instincts we get. We don't have to be willing. It's just already there. We don't have to be able. It's already done. It's the doing of the done. But If one of those little rays of light decides to leave and go over here and dance by itself, I'm on my own. I'm on my own down here. What happens? The energy goes. The light goes. The strength goes. You cut yourself off from the source. You cut yourself off from the source. So that helps me sometimes when I'm tempted to believe that Hey, God, I don't feel you close to me today. What's going on? Where are you? God always says, I haven't moved. I'm right here. But it doesn't always come that quickly when you're in the middle of... of A hard time, struggle, yeah. Of the storm. And working in Hollywood all these years, um, not a lot of believers on the set. I was going to ask, did you run across other believers? Did you get to be friends with coworkers who were Christians? What was that experience? Um, after I started God's Party. Tell about that. I want to hear how you started God's Party on the CBS lot that I went to quite a few times. <laughs> did you? I did. Oh, I'm so glad. Isn't did you that enjoy something? it? Isn't that something? Loved it. It was, a, it was like a, it was a party yeah. for God every time. Yeah. Twice a month on the CBS lot, right? Yeah. For how many years? Twelve. Twelve years. Unbelievable. So tell me how it started and what you did. Well, I was going to a Bible study, which shall not be named. And um, actually, that Bible study started in my house. And it got so big that we had to move to a hotel. And we moved to a hotel, and I had a crazy thing happen one day. God said, went out, go out and buy 96 Bibles. Why 96? Why not 100? I mean, you know, and you think Looney Tunes, right? Am I am I <laughs> am I hooking into the wrong signal here? <laughs> Are you sure 96? Yeah. So I got 96 Bibles and I went to the Bible study that I'd been that started in my house. It's now big in a hotel. And I went I said to the person that was heading it, "Can I make an announcement?" Yes. I said, I went out and bought some Bibles today. So for those of you who don't have Bibles, would you raise your hand? And you know how many raised their hands. 96. 96. And I went, I got to listen more carefully. And this person that was leading this by now very large group with a lot of celebrities that would come wanted to do commercials, infomercials. And he wanted to sell Proverbs. I said, I don't think you can sell Proverbs. I didn't know they were for sale. (laughs) sale. (laughs) And 
he wanted me to do things in these um, commercials that God said no. Now, his some of his family members came to me and said, "But you know, he's this. He's a healer. I watched healings go on. Amazing gifts from God. Amazing gifts from God. But there were certain things I was asked to do that didn't feel right." And the family members came to me and they said, and this is some Christian leader, okay? So I said no, which does not make me popular with the group. And I heard in my spirit, call this man at CBS. Our so I dear did. friend, Mike Klausman. Mike. A- amazing man. Amazing God. man. Yeah, amazing. So I called Michael and I said, Michael, I think God's calling me to lead a Bible study at CBS, I don't know. And there, I'll tell you the reason, I'll tell you what happened, because I wasn't looking for this. Karen, I wasn't looking for it. Mm-hmm. A, a girlfriend who was had this huge organization was told she had cancer, and she was the color of cement, of gray. And she was getting chemo, and I had a few girlfriends over, so when I was living on Wilshire Boulevard, and we were praying, and um, she called and said, can I come over? I said, please. She came over, and I said, just let us pray for you. So we started praying for her, and we watched the pink come into her hand on a gray hand. We, wa- we, we watched the pink. The miracle was happening. Yes. We saw it, and God said, I want you to do more of that. And I said, do more of what? He said, allow me to use you for that. I thought, no, no. I want to belong. I don't want to stand out. I want to belong. And if I do that, I mean, I'm, I'm giving you the warts here because because this is what we go through. We all do. It's important to hear. Have you been through that too, Karen? Oh, goodness, yes. yes. I'm, I'm like, no, Lord, you're, that's a mistake. I think you need to shift gears because that's not right. Yo, oh, oh, gosh, it, it yes. It makes me feel so good to hear you say that oh, because my goodness. you think you're the only one. Never. Do you know we what I mean? never are. Everything we say t- will touch somebody who understands. So I said, no, no, uh-uh. I'm going to belong. I'm going to be part of Hollywood. And they think you're weird. And back then, honey, it was even, you oh, know. harder. The, believe me, the community was so small. So small. So I said, I, I think you, there's many people that will do that for you. Pick something where I can do my thing, right? So... Was it, I think I was in Australia filming, and a healing happened with Darlene Check oh my from goodness. Hillsong. Mm-hmm. With one of her group. And I went, okay, God, this is, remember the talk we had? No, <laughs> this isn't for me. So then I thought, but the Bible study's cool. But that's cool. Mm-hmm. So called Michael Klausman. He said, absolutely. And he said, once in a while, I'll give you a sound stage. You can go all night if you want. So I went to the friend at the place, and I said, uh, I'm going to be starting this Bible study at CBS. Can I hand out flyers here? He said, not at my Bible study. I said, oh, okay. Um, I didn't really say it that easily. I bet. <laughs> Oh, it's so sad to hear. It was disappointing. It was. And I had found him after the hotel said, no, I had found him another place to go. I thought, okay. And um, I handed out flyers, and this is before the Internet. Right, right. Can you believe something was before the Internet? (laughs) I know. (laughs) Imagine that. You can't. People communicated before the Internet? How could that be? So, um... I don't know how, yeah, I do, but opening night was just huge. And then somebody raised their hand and said, can I come up for prayer? And then hands shot up. Oh. Here we go. So there are about 100 people in a prayer line, and that's how it started. And then you were faithfully doing it every other week? Every for other tw- Saturday night. For 12 years. For 12 years, I had a... I had a great 
band. I had maybe 15 singers. You did. You had balloons. You had, you, it was so joyful and oh, so full well, of love. Well, God told me to call it God's party because people don't associate party with, with God. God. No, God's too they serious and tells you what to and, do. Yeah. And yes. No, so it, it was, was. It was joyful. a party. Yes. It really was. And you must have seen miracles and healings and people becoming Christians. and. Well, people were coming in at that point, Karen. People were allowed on the CBS lot. So people from all over the world Could came to up. Hollywood to be saved oh my God. on now the CBS that's, lot. That's ironic. Coming to Hollywood to be saved Think on about the CBS that. lot. Because they were coming from all over the world, not just because of my Bible study, but it's CBS Studios. See, God was clever. He was. He knew CBS where to bring it. CBS Studios. I mean, people want to get on the lot. They want to see that. So they came on the lot and they got saved. And they got healed. People would come in on walkers and they'd walk out. People would come in, I, I mean, so many stories. And then somebody came in, this girl, who asked me to pray for, and, but you know, you don't do this alone. No. I still have two of the people that I'm working with today were with me through every second of that, three of them. You know, uh, it takes a team, it takes a village, it takes committed people, as you know. Oh, goodness. you know, you can't. You know more than anybody alone. about that. So, um, this one girl um, God had me laying hands on them, okay? And so, and we had catchers. I laid hands on this girl, and she fell, but the catcher missed her. And she sued me, and she sued CBS Studios, no. saying that she couldn't work, that she couldn't have sex for months. Her husband that said that was part of the that lawsuit. Was part, that was part of the lawsuit. Well, look yes, at that. Okay. look at that. Unbelievable. Yes. So I was in. What do you call them? Not negotiations. Mediation. Uh, medi I was in those kind of things with those kind of people, and they sh sued CBS. So when I went back after that, my arrangement with CBS had to be different. Yes. And and uh, caused all kinds of things, but we stopped. Because of September 11th. When September 11th came, they couldn't let the public on the lot anymore. It came too hard to get out. And they had mirrors underneath cars oh, to get in. Oh, remember that? All and, that. And cement stanchions, and it was just, yes. It was a mess. So, but for 12 years, um, we did our thing. And that was, you know, in the day when, and, and the L.A. Times did, like, a huge story on it which just, you know, announced my Christianity to all of Hollywood. And what did that do to you? Well, I lost some friends. So-called, yeah, I did. A, a producer and an editor, um, friend, very, very, very close, uh, talked about a baby's healing. They said, don't tell us about ba babies can't get healed. What are you talking about? And I invited them, but yeah, I lost some friends. But you know what? I've learned... And it's not always easy to lose friends. Even if you say, well, you know, if God wanted them to be my friend, they'd stick around. It still hurts. It still hurts. It still hurts. It still hurts. But in the process, did you also see people come to know the Lord because of it? Oh, my goodness. Or get, or get confident in their own faith that they were afraid to talk about otherwise. Seeing you were being bold, wouldn't that encourage other people? I think it did. And I think it encouraged some people in the entertainment business to stand up and stand up for what they believed was right. Well, I actually know that's true because that happened to, to Jim and I. When we came and we saw you boldly throwing a party for God on a television lot, we said, he's moving. We can be bolder. We can be bolder. And that's just me. Can you imagine all the people who came who never got a chance to tell you that? Oh, Karen, you're so generous. It's so true. So generous. Isn't the Spirit of God just amazing? Amazing. Isn't it just amazing? And the fact that he chooses us to be a part of his bigger plan is, is just incredible. But he needs us. We're his expression, right? Without us, I realize the that rocks lately. Will cry out. Yes. I realize that lately more than ever, Karen, that he needs us as much as we need him. And I think that's why Jesus said, I and my Father are one, not two, one. He didn't say me and my pop were two. He said, we're one. And to me, that oneness is what 
doesn't allow for pain because God doesn't inflict pain. God inflicts harmony and truth and love and life and energy and soul and spirit and might. Yes. And when I'm not feeling that, I know I've got work to do. I know I've opened a door that shouldn't be open. And the enemy's going to take advantage of it. It's that simple. Yes. It's not complicated. And I believe that's what Jesus meant when he said, watch. He didn't mean the parade. He meant our thoughts. What are you thinking now? What are you letting in? What are you observing and taking as real when I've told you that that's illusion? That's not the real deal. I'm the real deal. I am your all in all. Forty times in the Old Testament, it says, I am the Lord and there is none else. Wow, 40 times. 40. What does that mean? You it's can't add important. anything to all. I am all in all. How, you can't add anything to all. But we keep trying. Oh, this man's going to make my life complete. Yes. Oh, this movie's going to make me a star. Yes, this is all I need. <laughs> this car will get him. This dress will get him. I need more, 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 right? Which is one of the keys of destruction in our industry, is thinking that if we just had a little more, things would be better. If I had a bigger role, if I had a little more money, if I had more clout, if I had more uh, people paying attention to me, it's trying to fill up with earthly that things, that hole, that hole that Pascal says only God can fill up. It, it's true. It's so true. Did you have other Christians doing other things while you were doing God's party? Did you feel support of other believers? Or did you feel like you and your team were kind of the only ones? I felt like um, me and my team were it. I had um, that article that came out in the L.A. Times. When, when was that? When, when was During God's party. They came to God's party. I said yes. They filmed me doing my thing. And it was positive. Ah. Oh. I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know if they were going to make fun of me because they weren't writing those kind of articles about Christian actresses. And, and you were name, really working like mad. My then. name was above the title in films. Yes. So it wasn't. I wasn't just doing bits. I was starring. <coughs> Excuse me. And co-starring with some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Right. Right. So it was a. I. But this is what God said to do. Go ahead and do it. So I didn't know, still, you can still have them do it, and it can still be negative. So when, they, when the God's party ended, you continued in ministry. Yes. You have been involved in prayer groups and Bible studies. You've, been, you've, you've given yourself so much to our community. What have been some highlights for you? Oh, I think it's all, I can, I think it's all highlighted. Uh, it was interesting because Larry King, you know, had a big show, and he said, they called me when I was filming. That's what I wanted to tell you. I was filming in Australia, and they called, and they said, Larry King wants to come to a God's party, and he wants to film it. I said, well, he can film everything but the healing part because people are very private about that, and they don't want that. But he wanted that, and I said, well, that's okay. He doesn't have to come. But he came anyhow. And... What I did was, <clears throat> excuse me, I had people there that had been healed to talk about their healing. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, and, and he listened to that. And, and so that was, that was very big for me because I went to a Benny Hinn crusade once and his people knew I was there and he called me to the stage. And he said, what do you think of all this? I said, I'm not sure. He said, what do you mean? I said, there's something in the Bible that says, God, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I said, I don't know if I believe all these healings. I don't know. I said, I'm seeing what's going on, but honestly, I mean, I've never been afraid. I, I've, I've always been bold. And I'm not, I've never been afraid to tell the truth except if I thought it was going to get me spanked by my daddy. That's the one line you drew. <laughs> That's right. Well, you were... The first woman to ever be nominated for an Academy Award, both in front of and behind the camera. You, you, there was even a quote by the Academy that said that you 
were a distinguished woman of integrity, and your perseverance is what allowed you to get all of these awards and everything. You are known for being strong. You're known for being a person of integrity and of vision. And that comes through in your career and in your faith. It's a beautiful thing. And that's that's a trait that I think is important for people to see as a role model, to say, we, we can't give up. We have to be confident in who God has made us so that we can make a difference. I agree with that. Well, thank you for those, for those kind comments. But I have to all also say and add to that, Karen, this is, this is some years ago we're talking about. And you have to remember that being a strong woman then wasn't always popular. No, it wasn't. And because I would stand up for things that I was led to do, I got put down. I got put down. Being a strong woman, even in the world today, it's easier. It's far easier, but it still it's meets still with, we're still not paid as much. Mm -hmm. We're still not hired as much for being directors and producers, and we're not. No. So being a director back then and being a woman who stood up for myself and said, no, I'm not going to do that, or yes, I'll do that, but could you do that, wasn't popular many times. So in spite of that, in spite of that, God granted me awards and firsts, and I sold my house to make a movie and all kinds of really silly things, you know. Bold things. Yeah. Yes, you trusted yeah. what God had for you. Yeah. And there were times, Karen, I didn't know it was God leading me. There were times I just did it because I felt so strongly about it. I just read about this, this kid that played Elvis that they took him to the, to the hospital at 4 in the morning to the um, emergency Butler, yes. to the emergency ward because he said to his mother, I, I, don't, I don't know who I am anymore. Well, if you're going to be an actor or an actress in Hollywood, you better be rooted something deeper than the way you feel. We count on those feelings for what we emote, but you better know who you are in Christ. Yes. Are you saying that's the only way, Diane? I'm saying that after all, everything I tried going through this and that and him and her and them and there and ice cream, uh, it's the truth. Let me tell you a story, Karen, about my teacher. Over 40 years I worked with her. 40, over 40. And I was in London and she was in the hospital. And I said, I'm coming back. She said, no, please don't. I said, oh yeah, I've got to. She said, no, I'm not gonna let you come to the hospital. I said, why? She said, because I want you to stay focused on God. Stay focused on God. I called her, I came back. And I would make, in those days, cassettes. Uh huh. And I would send them on a cassette player to with scripture to the hospital. I called her on a Saturday and said, can I come? She said, darling, please don't. It would maybe. So on a Sunday, I kept feeling strongly call her. And I called her. And during the phone conversation, I heard, uh, 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 sirens going off in back of her. And she said, you can come today. I said, I can? She said, yes. And why don't you bring Maria with, with, you, with you, her housekeeper? I said, oh, I can come and see you? She said, yes, I think it's, I think it's good today. And uh, I heard, get off the phone, get off the phone, and these sirens going off, alarms going off in back of her. And she said, and darling, I said, yes. She said, don't take in what you see with your eyes. She was teaching me, Karen, as she was passing on. She was, she was going right then to heaven, right there with right you on the phone. Then with me on the phone, with them screaming, get off the phone, with the ah, 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 alarms going off. She was teaching me. That's how blessed I've been in my life, to know people like her and you yes. and others, so blessed with people that stood and committed themselves to telling the truth at all costs. Can you imagine, Karen? Oh, uh, unbelievable. That, that's a gift to have a woman like that in your life that you just for over 40 years. And I would call her sometimes and say, this happened on the set and that happened on the set and this, and she said, I haven't heard you mention God once. <laughs> so based on your experience, based on this amazing teacher that you had on your long walk with the Lord, what is something you'd like to leave with someone who needs to be encouraged in our industry? Oh my goodness. You know, 
one breath at a time. Not one day at a time. One breath. And where does that breath come from? The body says absent. The Bible says absent from the body and present with the Lord. What does that mean? It means when you're when you're up against it, if you're scared, or if you're feeling doubtful, if you're feeling your head can't go through that glass ceiling, if you're feeling like it's it's not going to work, if it's feeling like I'm too short, too thin, too tall, too old, too young, too this, too that. You're just perfect the way God sees you. That's always been so hard for me to get a hold of, but I'm getting hold of it more now, that God just loves me. And if we just stop for a moment and allow that love, to embrace us. It will, and it does. Never fails. The Bible says love never fails. So you can just leave, you can leave God out of it for that minute. Love never fails. And we keep looking for it all over the place, right? We can't find it because it's not out there. Isn't it amazing? It's been inside us all the time. It's the last place we look. We're so blessed, aren't we? We are so blessed. You just have moved my heart so much. I can't believe it. You have been a pillar of faith and strength and perseverance and confidence in God. You you have to just be excited that you are a part of God's plan to change people's lives in the entertainment industry when so many Christians are even afraid to come here, let alone work and commit. And you have shown up and changed so many people's lives. I I cannot thank you enough for everything you've done and for what you stand for and for who you are. It's so beautiful. Well, Karen, I thank you for that, but you're the one that's doing the work. Talk about changing Hollywood and your hand on Hollywood and the way you're changing the industry, not just Hollywood. You are responsible, you and your precious husband and your kids and all those that are around you. Thank you for inspiring us all and for being who you are and for being obedient and for not just recognizing the truth, but you live it as much as anyone I know or have known. You live it. Doesn't she, Chris? Yes. She lives it. She lives it. I just asked her son who's on camera. She lives it. You live it. A lot of people talk it. You know that. They talk it, but living it is what you do all the time. I've never seen you any other way than the way you were today when you greeted me. You just, the love of God just pours out of you. And look how relaxed these puppies are. I love it. <laughs> they, they feel they, so they always happy. they always feel the anointing, you know. <laughs> they do. Uh, so thank you, Karen, for all you do. You. I thank you on behalf of oh. everyone I know who knows you. We love you. I love We're you. We're grateful. Thank you for being my friend, for encouraging me, and for all those you encourage, and for the way you're changing Hollywood. We love you and appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you. I feel the same about you. And let's do more because you have so much to offer, and it's never enough time, and you're amazing. Thank you for being with us with the amazing, wonderful, godly woman and friend, Diane Cannon. We hope you join us for the next episode. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Hollywood Changemakers. If you'd like to get connected with us, our Instagram handle is at Hollywood Prayer Network. Find out more at HollywoodPairNetwork.com.